ladies and gentlemen. We embark on part two of the evening. So, let's look back at some of the events of the last year. It, I think I can safely say that in all the many years of the club's existence, there hasn't been a year to match this past year. It has been absolutely amazing. We joined the Thames Valley Cross Country League six years ago. This was our, our sixth year at it. And when we started, we joined very nervously. We were the 15th club to, to join the league, so there's lots of competition out there. Lots of them are much bigger than us. And we worried that, well, would we even get enough people to turn out for the race? You needed six men and three women for every event. <laughs> So we, we were a bit concerned that we'd be able to live up to this. But we, we got through the first year and it, it was rather better than we thought it was going to be. It, it wasn't quite as frightening an experience. And that carried on through the, the following four years. Uh, and we did tolerably well, but we never ever threatened to win a race, never mind the league. That changed this year, and this year has been absolutely outstanding. There are trophies for the first ladies team, for the first men's team, and for the, the overall um, race. And there are seven races in total this year. And I'm pr proud and amazed to say our ladies team were the trophy winners and they won all but one of the races that counted. Absolutely astounding. In fact, they had wrapped up the contest after the penultimate race. So it, it was just a, a, a coast to the, the finish line when it came to the last race when incidentally we had 70 runners turning out in total, which puts into perspective our original concerns about could we muster nine. Um, so we have the trophy with us tonight, which is marvellous, because we don't normally have it handed over to us until October, so we lent it for the night, specially, and I'd like to present the trophy to Dawn, our ladies' captain. <laughs> The men were second in the league. In fact, they were joint first coming into the last race, but Datchet just pipped them in that last race. But again, second vastly exceeded our expectations, not just six years ago, but six months ago. But the performance of the ladies and men's together meant that we won the overall trophy as well. with a race to spare. Anyway, we have the trophy again. We've managed to borrow, and we, I'd like to present it to both the men's and ladies' captains.
You might think we're milking this for all it's worth. <laughs> and of course we'll bite. It may be our last job, so we're, we're, we're going to make the most of it. Um, so we wouldn't like just to leave it at that presentation of a, a couple of trophies. Would we, we want the people who actually shared in the success by being amongst the 110 or something like that who took part in one or more of the races during the season. Would those people who are here tonight please stand up at their tables? So all, all the competitors. Don't sit down yet. We, we thought that what we should do is to have some lasting mementos of this memorable occasion. And so would table one, like the people who are uh, runners from that table, like to go along to, to Dawn and to Ian, going to play this one, are you in? Yeah. Who is there? Right, so la ladies to Dawn, gents to Ian and pick up their memento of this memorable cross country season. Right. Keep coming from tables three, four, five. <laughs> Seven, eight, and nine. white top. 
tops though. <laughs> this year, not just for the ones who happen to be here tonight, so we'll find the best way of distributing those uh, in the next couple of days. Now, let's move on to our regular annual awards. The first one is Roland's Trophy. This is for the member who has the highest percentage score in our 10k handicaps. This takes account of age and gender, so it's open to all. And we would like to invite Koji, who is last year's winner of this, to come along to present the award for the 2017 winner. I told you, Pete. We know it's Pete Mayan. which is uh, the trophy awarded for the most improved runner during the year, a hotly contested prize. This is going to be presented by Bob Webb, our president. Thank you, Jeff. Everyone know Pinny Dimmock? Oh my God, they're all too young. You, maybe you do remember Peter Dimmock. Yes, but, uh, John, but John and I don't remember him. He, was, he um, actually uh, was a big presenter on BBC television some years back. And he was our first president. So I was lucky enough and very fortunate enough to be able to take over from Peter Dimmock, someone really famous. Anyway, enough of that. I've got three names here. And I'm going to call out those names as... Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Okay, so we have three names, um, all equally, shall we say, deserving of a particular trophy. Um, we have Adrian Watmore, Mike, Rich, Mike Goodwin. And Sharon Bradley. Yeah. 
Just one thing before I go. This is getting more like Sports Personality of the Year yeah, as years go by. And there's an unsung hero which I'd like to name, and that's Mr. Jeff William. Yeah. A great MC, and what a great chairman at the committee meetings. He keeps us all in order. Thank you, Jeff, very much. Thank you, Bob. We now have the Cross Country Award, recognising a particular individual contribution to the season just gone. To make this award, Steve Moody. This, uh, this award is given to the person who we felt, as a committee, had made the biggest impact on the cross-country team. When we were looking at this, we were looking throughout 2017, so we were looking back at last season, and we were looking through the first half of this season. And we had four nominees who were put forward for this award. Uh, and I'll give you a bit uh, of information about each of those. So the first of these is Dawn Godwin. In the eight races during 2017, Dawn ran in all eight of those. She <laughs> uh, Yeah, who chose the picture? Uh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but Dawn was first uh, Windle Valley Lady five times out of those eight uh, and scored four as in seven times out of those eight. Um, so Dawn was the first nominee. Next nominee, Gareth Baker. Gareth ran seven times out of the eight races and scored in all seven of those. Uh, he was first uh, Window Valley Man on one occasion and second uh, on three more occasions out of those seven races. So a very strong season for Gareth. The third nominee is Helen Ladd. Helen ran in all in six of the eight races, scored in all of those, uh, and was first Windle Valley Lady twice. And the fourth nominee is Ian Coates. Ian ran in all eight, scored in seven of those, and as men's captain, he really led from the front. Uh, he was hugely influential in getting out, uh, getting our teams to turn out uh, each week, which was the most, really, the most important thing in getting the results. Um, so he was doing all that beside, behind the scenes, as well as turning out uh, and running really well in the races. And so, the golden envelope. Uh, and to announce the winner. What I'm going to do is ask Laura Hales, who was the winner of this award last year, to come up and open the envelope. Shall I open it first? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't get it open. Okay, I'm very pleased to announce that Ian Coates is the winner. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha 
Now we have a, a new trophy. Um, Paula Fudge kindly donated a trophy to us earlier in the year, one of the, no doubt, uh, hundreds that she has at home. Uh, and she wants to, to clear out one of the best, I have to say, uh, and pass it on to us, and we were amazingly grateful for her doing so. So this is going to be... This is the Paula Fudge Distance Running Trophy, um, generously presented by our own Olympian. So, this recognises the efforts of the people who run marathons and other demanding distances. To make the presentation, Mike Rock. Thank you, Jeff. So this is the first time we decided to do a Distant Runners Award. Thank you, Paula. Um, and the committee wanted to recognise those who were running marathons and above. And it takes into account distance, terrain, times, and sometimes sheer bloody-mindedness. So I think I can speak from experience here, but uh, long-distance runners are a bit odd, let's face it. <laughs> a few screws loose. A few cans short of a six-pack. <laughs> but um, I just pulled up a, a little quote that I thought was, uh, was fairly apt. This is uh, T.S. Eliot. He said, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. So bear that in mind. Also, or probably something more relevant. If you start to feel good in an ultra, don't worry, you'll get over it. <laughs> so it's a great year for Windle in our distance running with us running 78 marathons or ultra races during the year, making up a total of over 2,000 miles of races and probably 10 times that in training. 16 runners ran more than one long distance race and there were eight PBs hidden in there. So our nominees tonight are Sarah Francis, So Sarah ran uh, four off-road marathons last year. Um, I'm including the Man Versus Mountain, which is not quite a marathon, but we'll call it one for uh, argument's sake, because you have to finish at the top of Snowden. Um, two ultras, including the Lakeland 50, which I've heard from friends is one of the toughest races you can do, plus a whole host of shorter races, and uh, as we know, brutals as well. So well done, Sarah. Our second nominee is Jay Sinclair. Jay, Jay is notable for uh, running his first 100 miler um, in 2017, and I think the club's only 100 miler, um, no surprise. Um, I, I ran the last 33 miles with him and he was a wreck. Um, please don't do it, it's not, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> our second nominee was, our third nominee was Andrew Loudon. <laughs> Having managed to run three marathons in three different countries, with the Tromso starting at, what was it, 11 p.m.? Started at 8.30. Finished at 1 in the morning, so uh, well, <laughs> well done, Andrew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And our fourth nominee was Phil Young. So Phil's time at London last year of 2.44.21 was a new PB for him and actually a club record taken off our own Bob, so well done Phil. <laughs> I knew there'd be an excuse. Well done Phil. So, our winner.
Sarah Francis. we move on to the Park Run Trophy. This recognises particular contributions to or achievements in park runs during the year. And to make this presentation, our secretary, Ross McLaren. For those that don't know, the Park Run Award is for notable performances in a park run. So that could be fastest time, slowest time, most PBs, most effort. Most countries run a park run in. There is no real kind of rule for it. It's more about recognising hard effort um, on a park run. If some of you cast your minds back to uh, Sports Personality of the Year, there was a bit of a satellite uplink problem with Mo Farah. We decided not to go for that tonight, so there was, um, uh, the winner is not here. Um, some of you may know that a presentation happened at the park run this morning. Um, of the people that were nominated, quite honestly, there was one clear winner um, on a landslide 12-0 from the committee. Uh, so like, uh, despite some very notable efforts uh, park run wise, there was a clear winner. And that was because I know, I don't know why I'm opening it. <laughs> you were there, Ross. <laughs> was Pam Berryman. And... <laughs> and just to give you some criteria to that, Pam uh, may, may not have been running as many uh, park runs as she would like over the last year or so due to health reasons but she volunteered 43 times at Frimley Lodge Park Run in 2017. So that's well um, worthy of this award. So well done, Pat. You see her there having received the trophy in advance of the evening. Cheating. We move on now to the Awards that we've all played a part in voting on tonight. So it's photo of the year. And to make the presentation, Sally Taylor, who was the winner of the award last year. And the winner is Richard Everingham. Sadly, Richard isn't here. Um, some of you will know that he um, had a, a hip replacement operation about two months ago and could be seen hopping around sometime afterwards. But last time I saw him, quite recently, you wouldn't have noticed he had an operation at all. Miraculous. Anyway, uh, carry on re recovering well, Richard. <laughs> we go on now to the captain's awards. Um, each of the men's and ladies' captains is given free reign from the committee to choose who they like for whatever criteria they want to select, just people who have made a particular contribution during the year. So, ladies captain, oh, <laughs> men's captain for <laughs> Ian Coates. So, 
So it's uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be uh, captain of a, a club uh, at the best of times, especially in a good season. Um, so thank you very much for, for coming. It's been a, a, a long thought process um, to uh, to work out this award, and it goes to a club member who is an ever present at this season's cross country. I think he's been to nearly all of the club runs, the, uh, the handicap runs around Windlesham in 2017. He's very much a partner and regular. He's Mr. Motivator when it comes to the beginners groups and to the Couch to 5K program. I'm confident pretty well that every one of us in the room this evening will have seen him at an event in the last 12 months. If not taking photos, then he's shouting encouragement, or at the very least, he's completing the unsung admin duties that nobody likes. He's also run his very own personal race over the last few months. And I'm sure you will join me to applaud the standout read and winner, Steve Moody. I should also have one of the uh, cross-country trophies, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Over to Dawn. Ian and I thought long and hard about the people who have done such a fantastic job and, and every one of you, you're all amazing people and that's what makes this club so good and why we all love being together. There's one particular young lady who doesn't mind taking on a challenge since she's joined us. She came and she did the couch to 5k and uh, she just smiles in everything that she does and she takes on the challenge and she's just continued over the last year to embrace every single run that she does, and I'd like this award to go to Alina. Yeah. It's only fair to say that Paula donated those two trophies as well. So thank you again, Paula, for that. We move on now to the, the conclusion and the crescendo of the day, the club championships. Um, we have a men's and a ladies' championship. Um, each of them is decided on the aggregate score of people's fastest run over half marathon, 10 miles and 10K during the calendar year 2017. Uh, the lowest score, of course, being the winner. And we'll start with the ladies' championship and I'll hand over to, to Dawn to, to read out the winners. But of course, we're all winners. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, we decided to do the same as we did last year and we're just do the, the top 10. So in 10th place is our lovely Anna. Anna's, Anna's always smiling as she's running along. Such a lovely person to run this side. And in 9th position is lovely Lucy. amazing year. She keeps getting better and better at her 10Ks and I'm sure that the times will continue to come down. So well done Lucy. Number eight. <laughs> Sometimes it's more of a grimace. <laughs> I've run from him as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Number seven is Jill. Jill, I always think about fashion. Number six, another lady who has had such an amazing year and her times just keep getting better and better and I know she's got a lot more to come. Well done, Sharon. <laughs> and number five, a lady who has taken time to help us when we are trying to do our intervals on Tuesdays and that's Sue. Well done, Sue. Yeah. And somebody who can't be here tonight, our fourth lady, is Jo Obertel. <laughs> jo I call Mrs Motivator, lovely lady. So that leads me to the top three. And in third position we have Sachiko Dixon. Whenever I see her, she's always got such a lovely smile on her face, always. And it's a shame she can't be with us tonight. And in number two is Abby Fudge. Yeah. Paula, did you come and collect with Abby? Abby is never afraid to take on a challenge, raising a daughter, working, and all the hard work that she puts in to all of her running. She's had such an amazing year so far. Oh, sorry. Well, she's fudge. <laughs> and that leads us to the first place. A lady who is, I don't know where she gets her legs from, and I wish I had them. She's my namesake, and that's Dawn. Dawn Godwin. Thank you, Joanne. Well done. So we've dragged ourselves into the 21st century with PowerPoint. And uh, Kat, sterling work on the, uh, on the uh, IT department. Thank you. It's a hot bulb as well, isn't it? God. Um, before I do the countdown in the top 10, uh, there's a lot more people who've clearly contributed to, uh, to both male and female runners. Um, a couple of quick exceptions who, who don't make the, uh, the, the top 10. Uh, Damien. James. Ah, hiding at the back. <laughs> um, sorry, mate. <laughs> that, that, that's why I'm at the back. Um, the, there's not actually an award for uh, most half marathons in a season, but was it 12 in 12 weeks? In a few months, my bad. Well, 15 this year, apparently. Oh, interesting. Uh, likewise, um, super coach extraordinaire Mike Brock. <laughs> Most of uh, the sensible runners have submitted times running on flat and tarmac. Mike didn't get the memo and submitted a 10 mile brutal event. I think you ran it on the 31st of December or something like that. <laughs> Squeezed in. Um, clearly, the brutal events involve obstacles, mud, and Naturally, being for Mike, many hills. Um, if there was a cross-country event at the Winter Olympics, I'm pretty sure you'd be in Korea right now. Um, well done, Mike, on a serious note, and thank you for your, your Tuesday sessions. So, breaking into the top ten. Ten green bottles. Who got to the number ten? at the bar, who knew? Um, <laughs> just saying. Um, not, not only is he an absolute legend of a club secretary, he's posted some good run times over the last 12 months. Uh, there's a worry that the obsession and disturbing fondness of the zippy suit, though, um, 
that's going to slow you down. <laughs> yeah. In at number nine, and with a combined time of three hours, 21 minutes, it's Phil Ribbins. I know he's not here. He's, he's always seen either running, but running typically with Sash. I'm never sure who's chasing or who's keeping up with who in that, that pairing, but it's worked for Phil because he's taken 10 minutes of his time last year. Mm. Number eight is a relative newbie and a club, club member who joined the club midway through last year's cross-country series. In April, as Mike's already mentioned, he completed an epic 100 mile run. So I'm actually wondering if his cumulative times are just from one event. <laughs> um, well done and ultra applause for Jamie Sinclair. <laughs> Number seven belongs to a familiar face. Uh, back in the day when two legs actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff alluded to Richard Everingham's progress since his hip operation. But uh, if anyone's interested, we've started a, uh, a web page on the dark side of the internet for part runs completed on crutches. <laughs> Number six, a fantastic time totaling three hours and seven minutes. If you look up consistency in the dictionary, you'll actually see a picture of this in the, in the, on that page. <laughs> Into the top five. And at number five, it's our very own jet setter, Koji. An amazing talent posting consistent times all, and while notching up yet another London Marathon and qualifying for this year's run as well. I, Without a rude, at the age of, let's call it, north of 50, um, you've also sprinted your way to a par run PB in the summer. Fantastic running, Koji. Um, number four, um, he's not actually here, um, but I think uh, S Steve alluded to the fact that Gareth has um, performed excellently and immensely in the cross-country series. He's the only man to have scored all points and very low points at all seven races this season. Um, and as, very, as good as he can run in the cold, he can also do it in the summer. And he ran three PBs at successive events of Rushmore, Frimley and Bushy Park Runs. So uh, he probably could hit us, but well done, Gareth. So now to the top three, and between them here, these three are keeping the tech team at Garmin in a career. I believe Strava now has to ask each of them in turn if it's okay and convenient with them to do software updates. <laughs> third, third place goes to another club newbie. Jeff's astute transfer business in the window meant that Bracknell's loss was Windle Valley's gain. And completing a cumulative time of a whisker over three hours, Alex Webb. slowest picture of Alex I could find on the web. <laughs> the Runners Up Trophy goes to a club member who officially turned vet to veteran status last year. Despite this, he still managed pretty well the same cumulative times sort of an impressive 2 hours, four, 20, uh, 54 minutes, and a time that would have won the previous three years with daylight to spare. Despite being really reluctant, and I mean really reluctant, to give back the winner's trophy last year, 
I'm sure Rob Hartners wouldn't begrudge it going to a worthy place. But for Runner Up this year, Rob Hartners. So the 2017 champion, our winner, as previously mentioned, broke Bob's long-standing marathon record by bolting around London in 2 hours 44. He's obviously rapid at other distances too, with PBs through the year at half marathon and 10k. He's proven himself a cross-country elite, a serial park run and other event winner, including, I think, this morning. Uh, someone once tried to slow him down by getting to run with Pippi the dog. Clearly six legs weren't the problem either because he went and won that brutal race too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in an amazing time of two hours, 50 minutes, the 2017 club championship winner is... Philip <laughs> 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 Young. <laughs> Well, that concludes the awards for this evening. It's been a very special year for us, and we've tried to make it a very special way of recognising the year. I'd like to just take the opportunity, though, of making a further presentation to Catriona Riddell, before she escapes, who, who has organised the event tonight, and for the, I think this is the third year in a row she's done so. Thanks very much indeed. the staff of the Chop and Golf Course for giving us such a marvellous time tonight. Thank you. <laughs> With that, let's party the night away. Yeah. No? No. Oh. Cancel. <laughs> yet, yet another way of commemorating a memorable season. We have... Don't drop them. <laughs> Not one, but two cakes uh, ce celebrating. So there's a piece for everybody tonight if you'd like to take some home because we can check it. <laughs> If we had just a bit more time, we'd have thought of other things to do, but there we are. Anyway, thanks very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of the evening.